All right, common tactics of the left. This is what you're going to run into with leftist psychology, and this is just what experience has told me. One, they're always going to change the topic. The second they sense that they're about to lose a debate, they will switch gears and, oh yeah, well, uh, 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 Ronald Reagan kicked puppies and babies in 1986. It's, you know, we were talking about corporate tax policy a second ago. They will always change the topic. Don't let them change the topic. Resolve one issue at a time. Two, one person's behavior reflects an entire ideology. Russia was addicted to Oxycontin. Sanford had an affair. John Edwards cheated on, oh, he's a, I'm sorry, he's a Democrat. Oh, <laughs> but therefore, because Rush did this and, and uh, Governor Sanford had an affair, all males in the conservative party uh, cheat on their wives and do dope. All right, has nothing to do, it's a name. Point that out to them. Is, you're talking about individual behaviors that has nothing to do with the ideology. And I know that seems childish and stupid, but these are the arguments you're gonna run into. Blame the boogeyman. Leftists have very simple minds. They like to blame huge problems on one person or a small group of people. George Bush is to blame for Katrina, the economy, war, my indigestion I had two weeks ago. Even though he's not president now, he's still to blame for it. Uh, because it makes it simple. Oh, here's a, here's a villain. We can punish this individual, this group of people. Uh, a perfect example is the housing market where people say, well, who do you blame for the housing? Oh, Bush. It's Bush and Greenspan. Bush and Greenspan. No, here's really who's to blame for the housing market. And the reason this is where who's really to blame for the housing market is because I've decided this is the, the, uh, how we're going to spread the blame around. Here's the government. I'll blame them 3%. The rest of it is American society. Idiotic Americans who were so stupid they didn't know how to do a simple budget and evil, corrupt, moralist bankers and so, uh, investment bankers in the industry that had no problem lending people more money than they were, that they could ever hopefully pay back. Try to explain that though to a leftist that, hey, society goofed up this one. This has nothing to do, nope, you can't blame 200 million Americans. You have to blame Bush, Cheney, and Greenspan, Inc. I just feel, I just feel that, you know, people are hurting and, and, okay, go play some Kenny G music then. All right, I don't really, all right. We cannot afford to feel. We have a $14 trillion economy, almost a $40 trillion global economy. We have 6.2 billion people on the planet. Feeling does not work. Instead of saying, oh, I feel, how will you upgrade to know? Here's a free upgrade to know. It's called the Wealth of Nations. It's called the OECD database. Point out they can, if other people's lives are based on it, they can't feel, they must know. It's irresponsible otherwise. Changing reality, this is a particularly tricky one. You will see the majority of leftist tactics not go for a direct kill on data. You will see it questioning data. You will see it proposing new theories as to how things should be measured. And a perfect example is GDP is not a good measure of progress. In other words, our level of production in a, company, a country is not a good measure of progress. Profits of a corporation is not a good measure of progress. So they came out with what's called the genuine progress indicator. This was the, you know, amazingly, once Reagan gets elected, it goes down the toilet. Uh, but what they do is, is they say, hmm, we can't win in the real world, so we're gonna change what's good. Well, wealth isn't good, low carbon emissions is. A fancy, powerful sports car is not good, a Prius is, okay? In other words, they will always try to criminalize wealth. Well, you should, you're greedy, greedy, oh, what do you need more than $800,000 for? Because that's $800,000 more I can stick in my ears and run around with, all right? <clears throat> the one question that defeats this is ask them, why do you always want more money then? Schools never get enough money, healthcare, education, never get enough money. Why do you always need money? If money is so bad, why is it they always ask for more? And then you'll see that's nothing more than a hypocritical argument. Norway, oh, they love Norway. Norway, well, in Norway, they, 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 they um, have gold streets and diamond cars and the dogs sing symphonies and play the violin in Norway, okay? Norway is a very successful country, but it is also a socialist country, right? And they always point to that at, as long as well as Sweden and so forth. But here's the problem, two problems. One, we're already there. I'll talk about this statistic later, but we already spend as much of our GDP in government programs as Norway does. I also threw in the European average there to see that we're only 5% below the Norwegian average. We already spend as much as Norway. We're already a socialist nation. What more do you want? North Korea level, 100%, would that satisfy you? All right. Two, Norway is rich because of oil. If you take, this is Norway without oil, going back to 1971, 
and GDP per capita in the United States versus Norway. You take the oil out of it, they're roughly only 75%, 70% of our standards of living. Okay? Now here's the ultimate irony. Oil's bad, right? And we're, we hate oil in the leftist philosophy, right? Oil's evil. But we cheer on Norway, but they get a quarter or a third of their standards of living from evil oil. Hmm. Point that out to, well, why? I thought oil was bad. Oh, but it's probably good because it's under a government corporation. In any case, there's your, if anyone, they'll, they'll bring up Norway and you point that out. Conspiracy theory, this is another little tactic that they'll have. You will present the data proving your point. They will claim it is bias. You will prove to them it is not. Therefore, it's not, oh, you've proved me wrong, I gotta rethink things. No, reality is wrong, ergo, conspiracy. Perfect example talking to a buddy, I said, look, unemployment has decreased under the Bush tax cuts. The reason I said that is because it did. Unemployment went down after the dot-com crash, you know, stimulus thing came down. He says, where'd you get the data? I said, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Doesn't get any more official than that, folks. He says, well, it's biased because George Bush is president. Yes, because that's what George Bush was doing, is, is tainting Bureau of Labor Statistics data while he was fighting the war on terror. Right. I said, well, okay, there's other, two other locations that are non-US sources, OECD and the International Labor Organization, neither of which are really right-wing bastions of hate and capitalism and other things. Guess what? The data was the exact same because they standardized their unemployment rates. Well, then there must be something wrong with this data. Ergo, it's a conspiracy. He didn't say conspiracy, but if all this data is wrong, the OECD, the BLS, the ILO, there are some pretty mighty powerful people in control of things that I'm not aware of, right? Well, conspiracy theory tells you is, is several things. One, it shows you how little they've thought through their ideology and their philosophy, let alone the actual data that they have. Two, shows how they will throw away data in exchange for adhering to their religion. Oh, well, that's wrong. I'm gonna go back over here. It's, but, but it's not wrong. It's, it doesn't, you're not gonna get any better data. Oh, it must be reality, is, perception is reality. Then two, it shows you how desperate they are. If you have to resort to conspiracy explanations three or four times in an argument, you do not have a solid foundation or understanding of your ideology. You, you, you really shouldn't even be arguing it. Understand socialism has a monopoly on name calling when it comes to racism, bigotry, sexism, so forth and so on. And the reason why is that very brilliantly, they have captured different groups, ethnic groups, gender, gay, whatever, and basically have established the premise that if you are not for socialism, then you must be a racist, a sexist, a bigot, okay? I don't know how many, maybe this has happened to you, but when you argue, say, oh, I don't like Obama because of his policies, blah, blah, blah. A friend of mine came, not a friend, but a, a, co, a, a colleague, I guess we would say, acquaintances. So why don't you like Obama? Is it because he's black? No, he's, he's a socialist. What is it? That has nothing to do. If it's not socialist, then you must be against women. Even or Lawrence Summers, perfect example. He said pretty much this, women should go into the sciences. That would help women immensely. It would close the gender gap or the wage gap. But he lost his job over it. So when it comes to this, capitalism is for everybody. And the socialists know it. The best thing that could happen to the black community is that they all go major in computer engineering or something like that. They say, forget it with these social programs. We're going to go and make money. Stick it in their ears and run around. That's what would be the best thing for them. But if they find that out, guess who loses a huge voting block? The socialists. Not to mention all the programs that they generate through various affirmative action, outreach programs, and so forth. Girlfriend said this, I don't care about your feelings. I care about you. That's arguably the best way to put this name calling thing. I don't care if you're insulted. I really care that you get a higher standard of living. And the way you're going now ain't gonna achieve that, all right? Okay, another tactic is yelling. And as I said before, it's childish and stupid, but so are most leftists, all right? It basically is the most simple uh, strategy they have because they can't argue against you, they can't engage you, so they're gonna yell over you. This happens in protests where they yell you, you know, hey, hey, ho, ho, capitalism has gotta go. Well, that was compelling, okay, you convinced me. But largely, if you see, like Tom Tancredo, he had to cancel a uh, presentation because some leftists on the North Carolina campus, I think it was, uh, got broke in, so forth and so on. Ann Coulter, I think, has had a couple pies thrown at her, a couple might have actually hit their mark. Uh, the larger point is that what this is, is nothing more than a violation of freedom of speech. This is Nazism, this is fascism, this is totalitarianism and repression. Uh, I don't know of one instance 
where someone on a capitalist side of the political spectrum came in and shut down any political speech by a leftist. Uh, probably because we have lives, we have more important things to do, and we actually value the freedom of speech even if people disagree with us. Uh, but apparently, it, most of the violations, or all of them that I know, come from the left trying to shut down speech from the right. 